Hello everybody and welcome back to Glen Isla, Perthshire, Scotland. In the last episode, our harvester went crazy on us and uh, basically ran rampant in the field after I couldn't stop him failing to bring up the UI again with a bug from the course play. So we've worked on that and we have reset the harvester because I think it developed other problems as well. And uh, yeah, so basically what we've done is we've emptied that harvester and we've rig set him up on field eight. And we're going to have to plot a course now again for field eight. I don't know if we had a harvester plotted course or saved course. Uh, even if we did, it wouldn't matter because that's a different size header. This is the new 9 meter header. So let's bring up the course play. And it is going to be used as a tool. We'll plot the course for field 8. Okay, so field 8. Headland. Three passes counterclockwise. And we'll set it to turn and double check your work with because there's seems to still be a little buggy as to whether it'll just remember the last work width or auto calculate the current work width. Okay, so we'll generate that course and we'll escape that. We'll check this bug, which always says counterclockwise, regardless of what you set in the course. Make sure that it's set right so we don't get any conflicts there. And we will start at the first waypoint and we will request the driver for the harvester so he knows to stop when to unload and we do have stop when unloading activated so he's ready to go and we'll just drive the course and again i think part of the problem we were running into the last time was i was closing the hud after i had started him on the course and then left the vehicle and let him to run the course when I came back and tried to re-engage the HUD or bring it back up, I couldn't. And then there's another bug that when you go to call for the, the HUD to come up, the driver wants to start to drive the course again and you have to quickly stop the driver. Well, I couldn't do that either. So he was just running the course over and over again. Hopefully by resetting the combine and uh, restarting everything like this, I'm hoping that we fixed it, but I'm gonna err on the side of caution and not close the HUD and just simply depart the vehicle. Okay, so he is going, he's taking off canola here. He seems to be well underway, so we will jump into, uh, let's take a look at what the Stroutman is, or is, sorry, the ST Max is doing. I believe we can put him to work. Um, putting down the oilseed radish in field one where we had taken off the crop from there and that's where the harvester kind of went crazy. So let's go over here. We'll set up the seed for oilseed. Boy, that's narrow. Keep running into that. But that's what uh, the Giants editor is for. I think I'm going to go in there with this map and uh, edit some of the hedging a little bit. Open it up just a little bit little too tight. I suppose if you were super careful it's not too tight. Okay, so we'll line him up with what I know will be our saved course. And we'll bring up the course play. And this is field one. We'll uh, look for this field one seater. There it is. And is a tool. We'll start at the first waypoint. We're set for oil seed radish. I'll just double check our speed because it remembers the speed from the last field that you were on. And we'll just make sure everything looks good there. And it does. So everything looks good here. And we will drive the course. And why? Okay. Let's stop the driver. Did I not set up field one? 
Is everybody laughing at me? I'm sure I did. Let's do that again. Okay, let's double check what we did there. Okay. So let's clear that off again. Double check what we did. I, I was, you know what? I shouldn't have to do that. This is field one, which is where we are. Okay, interesting. Suddenly, didn't want to bring the map up. Yeah, we're in field one. So I'm going to select field one, cedar. No, we're going to clear that again, refresh it. Keeps one done. We'll double check what our settings are. And that's what it should be. If we go here, we are set for this first waypoint. Let's try that again. That was just so weird. It, I don't know why. If you caught it, let me know in the comments. Okay, so away we go. We can uh, clear the overhead and we'll just bring up the uh, side screen here. And that's what we're doing. Everything looks good. And we'll close that, close this, and leave him to do his thing. Okay, so let's jump into the John Deere now. I have uh, oats in the front and soybean from the harvester that came off the field over there in field one. And I know I have soybean in the box here in the, in the silo. So let's put on that si uh, put on the, the soybean out of the silo, a little tongue twisted there. I'm distracted. Um, so basically we're just gonna do, do that and take it down to market and we will sell it because we need the money. I'm just going to set my cruise control here a little bit slower. Put on our hazards. And away we go. Forgot I still had my on-screen display going there. Kind of made a note to clear that off. Try to keep the map uh, down to a minimum and my escapes to the, to a minimum, short of you know actual things I need to do in game like buying equipment or land. And so everybody's along for that journey. That's my player camera mod that allows me to zoom back just a little bit. I wish it had a bit of a, uh, if they could build it into the mod to have a horizontal lock. In other words, going up and down would not manipulate the camera. I know that's part of the uh, a setting that I can change within game for the dynamic camera which I don't mind side to side for the field and a little bit of a tilt, but I find the, the dynamic camera is just a little too dynamic. Uh, they could ease up on that. I'm going to look into the game files and see if I can't do that myself. If I find it, I'll be sure to let you know. Just to ease it up a little bit. I mean, I don't mind a bit of a tilt, but, you know, in reality, your head wouldn't tilt that much going up and down that hill because your head would tend to go up and down a little bit too. All right, so... Box one is oat, box two is soybean. Let's see who's paying the best money for either one of those products. So oats, it would seem to be cell area two. And soybean would also be cell area two, which is where we are. So we'll just dump them both. 
wanted to point out a bit of a bug to Giants. See that brake line there? That black line that comes off the trailer? That's your air lines for the... Notice on the second one, it doesn't connect and it should. Bit of a bug for Giants to address. And our harvester is slipping. Let's just quickly take care of that. You have to have the course play up in order to have the cursor to select that. And we will st stop the driver. And I believe if we bring up the overhead, he should be transitioning into the first up down lane here. Yeah, that's exactly what he's supposed to do. So let's just give him a little bit of help here. We'll just nicely get him on that lane there. And then we will start him at the next or the nearest waypoint. And away he goes. We'll clear the overheads. And go back to what we were doing. Okay, so yeah, we made a good chunk of change. We had about what, 42,000? Now we got 111,000. Not so bad. So we'll put our hazards back on. We don't want to get a ticket. And no, I don't use a heads up display. I do this manually with the mouse. Just imagine your hand as a pivot a little bit. Let's go back this way, because I think we're going to need the tractor next over by the harvester. See what I mean? Like that's way too dynamic. It shouldn't move quite that much. Just a little bit of a tilt would be nice. So I'm going to look in the in the game file and look for dynamic camera and the amount of pitch it should be on a scale probably 1 through 10 or something like that and uh, I'm going to adjust that and then when you see the uh, end result of it you might ask me how I did it and uh, I'll be sure to tell you in one of my how to's okay so let's check on the uh, ST Max and he's doing a good job whoops yeah i i really like the course play uh it it brings a, a new aspect to the game not just for you know making it easier it actually allows me to find more enjoyment in the smaller maps which i never really had appreciation for especially the tight ones i don't mind working with small to medium sized equipment on a smaller map but the odd shaped fields where you couldn't even hire a helper, where you had to be basically full blown manual. Um, I don't mind doing things myself, but I don't want to be forced to. But so the course play totally alleviated all of that um, and actually makes me appreciate the feel of the smaller map. Now, even more so over the really big maps with really square fields. You have to try it to, to appreciate it. And I think if you've never used the course play and um, you're learning how through these videos and you go ahead and get the beta, uh, the link will be in the description below. Remember, you have to update it almost every time you fire up the game. It changes like literally a couple times a day. So there are bugs and, and bugs get worked out on a, on, on, a, on a daily basis or sometimes an hourly basis. So. Just be sure to update your course play um, regular. Okay, so I wonder if there's anything else in the um, oops, anything else in the um, silo that we can set up. Now this harvester is uh, just about done. He's going to have at least half a box of uh, canola. I'm guessing around 23, 24,000 liters, somewhere in there. Let's find something out of the silo that we can add to that and also take to the market.
I think we have sugar beets in here. I think we can sell sugar beets. Let's take a look. Oh, there they were. Yes, we have a full box of sugar beets. Okay, and we'll take that over towards the harvester there. Love the air ride in these cabs. Seeing everything moving around like that. That was, that was a good call. On the part of Giants. Okay, just in time. <laughs> it's telling us he needs to get unloaded. I have to fix this bridge. Look at the big holes in there. Holy smokes. Now I know one of the problems with having the larger header on this Russell Smash Harvester is they really didn't make the pipe long enough on this thing. It, you, it's so tight you pretty much have to scrape paint for it to reach. Oh, come on. Now I have you set to... What are you doing? It's, it is set. You saw me. I set it to stop during unloading. And soon as it started to unload, it started to move. Well, we took 2,000 liters out of there. Hopefully, that's enough for him to finish his job. Once he's finished, what we'll do is we'll uh, empty him, of course. And then we'll grab the cedar. And we will, I think we can go straight to seed on this field. I don't think we need to plow, but let's double check that. No, we don't need to plow. Lime looks good. So I have plowing and lime on. I got weeds off because I still think they've overdone the weeds. And I don't, uh, it was a great idea. I don't really like the look of the weeds they look literally there's a lot of variety in them but uh it looks like a serious pattern it's it's not it doesn't have enough variation to it you know like certain weeds will grow in bigger clumpy areas and then you'll get other weeds scattered throughout but it doesn't look like it and then I think that the weeds, the cycle is just way too aggressive. Now, I know weeds grow quickly, but not like that. Certainly not full grown to where they're taking over your crops right away like that. So I've elected to keep weeds off just for that reason. Hopefully they're going to address that and, uh, you know, fine tune the weeds a little bit. You know, put some variation in there as to how they grow and what they look like. It, it, it just looks far too much like a quick job to me okay so what we'll do is we'll jump out join the harvester and there's the stop point now i can stop the driver i believe we saved this course did we not i don't know that that's the right one i'm just going to save what we've got again i think that's the old harvester course so let's put in field eight. Harvester. Whoops, did I? I didn't spell that right. Whoops, another little bit. Okay, so now we've saved it. We know we got the right one. Um, let's stop the driver, clear the course play, and I'll just do a quick cleanup here. Waste not, want not kind of thing. Did we get it all? I don't know, a little bit over here still. Pick this off too. 
I don't like uh, leaving little clumps on the field. Like obviously you're going to get a little bit in a corner here and there again, but uh, in the middle of the field, big clumps like this, I don't like that. Okay, we'll get the pipe out. We'll do a loop here. Like I say, you got to get so close to this thing. You're swapping paint. It just barely reaches. Yeah, so I think I was pretty close. I figured about 24, what did I say, 23, 24,000 liters? Might hit 25. Okay, so we'll close that up. We'll just uh, teleport him back to home here, put him to bed. And I'm gonna park him alongside this shed just because I tried putting him in one of the sheds and it just looked like a dog's breakfast. He doesn't really fit in there. So we'll just park him beside the, the shed in the shade here nicely. And we'll rejoin the John Deere. Actually, what we should do is, well, before we even head for market, we will uh, just clean this one up a little bit. We'll stop the driver here. Whoops, wrong one. See what I mean? You bring it up and you have to stop the driver. That's the bug. Okay, we'll clear that course and clear the UI. We'll just do a little quick clean up here. Clean up this little bit in the corner here. I think it's hard to tell sometimes whether that's natural or yes, yeah, so you know it went away. And I think we pretty much got it all here now. Just do a once over, make sure. Checking up on our workers. A little bit here. There's no stubble sticking out of that corner, so I'll just leave it be. We'll uh, drive him over to field eight. A little too far out, there we go. really enjoying this map you know I it's just got such a nice feel to it I know I've said that in several episodes now but uh, and I'm repeating myself but uh, I say it because it's true if you haven't tried this map and you have course play try it I, I think you'll really like it Okay, so we'll set him up. Bring up the course play. This is field eight. Cedar, there it is. And we'll just double check our speeds for this field. We can speed it up a little bit on this field just because it's a, it's a longer throw. It's a, there's a bunch of straighter lines in there. And we're set for the cedar here, first waypoint and oilseed radish and away we go actually i'll just bring up the overhead again so you can see it so we're going to have three headlands the reason i do three on this field is because over here these hedges um, they do produce a problem in the up downs if you don't have a really wide area in here so just so you know All right, we'll leave him to do that. And let's jump back into the John Deere. And we can take this to market. Oh, wrong one. You ever do that? I've got them on the side of my mouse, a bunch of buttons on the side of my mouse. And quite frequently, uh, 
because I reassigned some of them. I, I now find myself just at a habit pushing the wrong button and have to relearn that habit a little bit. Hazard lights. Hopefully we make some good money off this crop. Canola is usually a pretty good price. Usually in the 1500s, I think. Somewhere in around there. 12 to 1500. Let's see what we get. You only get two options on this map. Cell area one and two. I wasn't sure how I felt about him having uh, them in the same spot. But you know what? For a small map... I like it. I, I've actually come to like it. Okay, so let's see what we can get for canola and sugar beets. Okay, so this is canola. Oh my goodness. Cell area 2, 920. That's way down there. I'm not impressed with that, but it is what it is. That's where we're going to go with that. Cell area 2, sugar beets. Um, that'll be cell area 1. Okay, so let's get out of here. So cell area two is getting the canola. Let's select the right trailer. What do we make off that? 23,000. Well, the extra cash is certainly, certainly welcome. And we'll switch trailers, the sugar beets. Another $10,200. So we've come a long way. I think we started with $42,000 uh, today. So, you know, we put $100,000 in our pockets. That's pretty good. Speed bumps in town. So, are you enjoying these uh, episodes? And the other question is, if you've watched a bunch of my episodes, ever since episode 6, 7, and what will be moving forward from there, I've increased the resolution scaling um, in the settings in the game from 120 to 150%. And I've also increased some of the finer uh, tweaks within the NVIDIA graphics settings uh, to do with texture filtering and stuff like that. Um, my anti-aliasing was always pretty high, so I've not really wanted to mess with that. My question to you is, does it look better to you? It certainly does to my eye. And, and the point I'm trying to make is with the compression settings from YouTube and stuff like that, it's it's a whatever you can do to enhance it within the compression will translate to a better picture. And I guess my question to you is this: Does the picture look better to you? Since episode five was the old settings, five and less, and every and all the other uploads, not just the uh, uh, Glen Isla. But does it look better to you since 5? Now 6 and 7, I'm using these higher resolution settings. I should dump this trailer, actually. Um, does it look better to you? I, I'd really like to hear. To my eye, it definitely looks better. But I'd like to know what your opinion is. Uh, please do leave me a comment. We'll just drop that second trailer right there. Let's double check our animals here. Do they need anything? Uh, chickens look okay. Horse looks okay. We'll just park the John Deere back over here by the, inside this shed, the silo shed. 
and we'll quickly take a look and see what the ST Max is up to. He seems to be doing a very nice job. So with that, I think we'll call this episode a wrap. We've made some good money. And in the next episode, I'm going to think about future plans and where we're going with the farm. Well, you know, what should we should do. Should we do forestry? Should we do sheep, pigs, cows? Uh, buy more land? If you have a vote or a preference, let me know in the comments. If you don't say anything, well, I guess I'll just do what I'm going to do. But uh, thanks for watching. And we'll see you again on the next one. Bye for now.